choices to make on BBC One in our new daily series with Martha Carney. Choosing the best school for a child is one of the most difficult decisions that any family has to make. It's even harder when your child has special needs. How the school sees the child will affect how the child sees themselves for the rest of their lives. This is Simeon. He goes to a mainstream primary school. He's had these friends since he started here. But soon Simeon's moving on to secondary school. Maybe as happy there. I think I'm popular with, because, because I'm in a wheelchair. I think it's because I'm in a wheelchair. And I'm popular. Maybe the whole school's my friend. This is Sophie. She goes to a mainstream comprehensive. She too is facing a choice. What kind of sixth form education should she have? When I leave college, I would like to get a job, get married, have one kid, not two because they were hurt, um, and have a normal life. What's the best way to fulfil potential and achieve these future dreams? To remain within mainstream education or find a school which caters solely for children with special needs? Simeon's the youngest of five children. He's nine years old. Well, we knew before he was born that he was going to have spina bifida, so we were prepared for that. So in many ways, that was a help, although we didn't know to what extent. Um, and the first two months I was in hospital with him um, because uh, he needed oxygen, didn't mm. he? And so mm. that was operations, quite stretching for us with four other children at home. Take one. Now, we're in the kitchen. Back to the skin full. And a few meat. Here you go. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. Oh. Which school do you go to, Simeon? I go to. Too close to the camera. <laughs> You know, there's all I sorts go. Simon's got a primary school. Kind of, I guess they just bank on ah, that. Is that the best school in the world? High five! Best school in the world. Yeah. Woo! We often said that being born into a family of, of four other children, although it meant the coping was tough, I think it actually was better in our in our in our experience that he was born into an existing family of siblings who therefore he in one sense it, it didn't magnify the problem so that's much right, as made true. him just number them with a family which is getting what we wanted. We lost something. We always wanted to not if we could help it not magnify the problems but magnify him as a person and part of the family with these special needs. We were thankful for the other children being there and being so good about it. <laughs> Sophie's almost 16, an only child, and lives at home with her mum and dad. Sophie was born nine and a half weeks early, so she was quite premature. My little, just over a bag of sugar, £2.10. She was diagnosed with having hydrocephalus, consequently she had some brain damage which resulted in her having cerebral palsy which was diagnosed when she was 10 months old. They always said that she wouldn't walk. I never quite believed it. I'm always one that says never say never. But she does a lot more than I think people expected her to. Sophie, Simeon and their parents are making decisions about the best way to continue their schooling. There are choices, state or independent, mainstream or special. Like all parents, they have the well-being of their child at heart 
as they try to choose the next school. We don't actually want to make him different and no. special and needing the, the thought he can just fit in normally. I love him to be in the, in the mainstream of everything, feeling life is about an adventure rather than life is just surviving. A couple of times she tried to play the disability card, didn't she? You know, she would say, oh, I can't do that, I'm in a wheelchair. I said, no, 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 you can't go down that route. You, you don't want anybody feeling sorry for you. You don't go through life expecting pity. You know, you just do what you can do, do it to the best of your ability, and that's fine. Half a century ago, Almost all disabled children were educated in special schools. There was a traditional medical model approach which had grown out of uh, a way of looking at disability that sort of developed in the 19th century, which again saw this problem in the person and that they should either be cured, rehabilitated or segregated away from the rest of society. I had polio in, in 1949 and it affected my left chest, back, right arm. But in the early 1950s, the approach was to overcome your impairment. So we were all turned into little super crips who could do almost anything, except that we weren't the same as everybody else. But whenever I saw myself in a shop window and thought, who's that little boy with a lopsided gate? I didn't identify with it at all because we'd been made to do so many things. So, for instance, I was swimming before I was walking and all sorts of things. So it came as quite a shock to me when the local primary school said they refused to have me because I was a fire risk uh, and I had to go to a school for physically handicapped children. And when I got there, it reminded me of the hospital I'd spent a year in and it smelt like the hospital and all the children were just sitting around doing nothing. Nowadays, many more are included in mainstream education. This process was spurred on in the late 70s by a government committee chaired by the philosopher Mary Warnock. We wanted to get away from the sort of medical model of um, thinking about children's needs. That is thinking what's wrong with them and putting them into different categories of things that were wrong with them. And in order to get away from that, we invented this catch-all special educational needs and said, more or less, you know, that most many children with special educational needs were going to do all right in mainstream schools. Simeon is proof of the success of this policy. All children have the right to attend a mainstream school. Simeon's parents, Paul and Sue, chose a local school for him. Certainly with our children, you'd always prefer, if possible, they go to a mainstream school because you'd want them to have the normal experience available. But we were aware that in the end, it's about what's best for that particular child yeah. and, and if by any chance it would have been best for him to go to a special school of some kind we'd have faced that because it's what's best for him in the end but I think for me it was just a relief I thought hey this is going to work very well and the only little thing for my mind was well can a wheelchair again no experience can a, a young person in a wheelchair cope at school right what we're going to do today is we're going to work on some athletics. We're going to do lots of different things, such as twinkle toes today. So in order to do twinkle toes, we're going to try and go inside all the gaps without touching the bars. Don't step on the slats. And you've got to keep your wheels on the track without sliding off. Look at the skill. I think he's secure with the friends. He's secure that they understand his needs and difficulties. He's aware that um, they can sometimes get fed up with him. He knows the children that might not be so pleasant to him, so he avoids them. He's very good at finding a little circle of friends who are supportive.
Hi Sim. Hello. How are you doing? Okay. Are you? Yeah. Um, How's your day been today? Yeah, it's been okay. Um, when after school we just went swimming. You went um, swimming after school? Yeah. Yeah. And how was swimming today? It was fantastic because I splashed mummy in the face. You s splashed yeah. mummy in the face? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> did she get very wet? <laughs> yeah, she came back. Yeah. And um, did she splash you back? <laughs> yeah. What do you find difficult about the wheelchair? Um, but when I come out the door to go outside the playground, I come out and this is bars. So I go to bed to find my friends. But when I'm not with my friends, I just see people running about, walking, and um, just chasing each other. Then I just look back to myself. We're trying to get inside a young person in a wheelchair and understand how it looks to them and how it feels to them and the vulnerability of change or rejection or not being able to be engaged with stuff um, and all those massive areas that they have to cope with. I think we look at the school and the consistency of everything working, of him being included, part of the community, part of the um, care of the staff and the whole way it's been handled um, I think has been a massively important anchor point for Sim over these last years as he's grown because as he grows he starts to realise the implications also of his situation. So I did do something else. Do you know what she's written? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie's also been in mainstream education since primary school. Now she's thinking about sixth form. Her secondary school's good, but there are drawbacks. It's mayhem, but it's very good because all, all the kids are very nice to me. It's a bit difficult for me to um, uh, access different lessons because some of the lessons are up, upstairs but, the, but the, the upstairs that I go is where the lift is but any other area to go upstairs I can't go. I am um, a bit left out because I, I've seen everyone walking and I'm in a wheelchair not doing anything but just driving around and running with people. Sophie and her parents, Stuart and Anne-Marie, have decided to look at options outside the mainstream, at a school where she'd be educated alongside other young adults with special needs. I think you can sift, all right? If I need to be on my left side. You do? Do you want to manoeuvre so you can... When Sophie first went to mainstream school, it was, it was fabulous for her. She, um... She, and, and for other kids, really, that are not special needs, you know, they, she was obviously the child in the wheelchair to begin with, but after a while she's just Sophie and people took her for what she was. I did, that's it. Bang it against the side. That's it. Yeah, I was on the edge, I was on the edge. Yeah, you are, way on there. You got on great, didn't you? But I think now girls are 15 and 16, they're going out and more out at night and weekends, they're jumping on buses and going into town. And on Monday, of course, they come back to school and they're all talking about what they've done over the weekends and Sophie's not done any of that. Because I also start to have mum tagging along. It's not quite the thing you want, is it? <laughs> when they um, have plans, like going to a sleepover or going shopping, I can't do that if my... if... My mum is there because... Not the same, is it? Sometimes... Well, it's like if a, if a kid if a kid at the age of 
15 let me had his had his or she's or she's or hers and none with her or him her friends or his friends might laugh at them and that's that's not good for your street cred is it hmm. Hmm. she's the same as any other kid with school you know you come home have a good day at school all right you know, <laughs> Unless it's a bad day, then you know. And then if she's had a bad day because of whatever reason, something that she hasn't been able to access properly, or she feels like she's been a bit left out or whatever, she'll say no, she's had a bad day. But all kids have that. I mean, that's just yeah. neither here or there. But I did feel just recently I was talking to her, because it was winter, we've had quite a cold winter, I was asking her what she'd done in, in a break or lunch hour if we're not getting out. And she belongs to a lunch club. And um, I said, so what do all your mates do? I said, they're still going out then, you know, in this freezing cold weather, like as kids do. And she said, she said, yeah, she said, she said they, they don't really sort of mix with me anymore. They, they so I'll just hang around on my own. And I had this mental picture of, like, this child looking lost and without anybody, and it, it broke my heart, that did. Yeah. And that was, and I really did think then that is definitely it. You know, it's definitely time for Sophie to move on. Sophie's preparing to attend an open weekend at a college for students with physical disabilities and associated learning difficulties. The dolly shoes. That's what they're called. Look, I'm with it. This is what this is what this is the kind of shoes that mummy wear. <laughs> National Star College is in Gloucestershire, more than 100 miles from Sophie's home. There are 150 students. Courses range from the vocational to learning skills for independent living to academic subjects up to A-level. Life at the college is designed to increase confidence and skills that will hopefully continue beyond the classroom into adulthood. Another thing a volunteer centre will help is that they'll acknowledge that. This is about um, signing your first tenancy and what's expected of you and what the landlord expects of you. What Star teaches you is to become more independent and like some people um, wanted me lack in certain areas. Like I didn't think I was very uh, academic here. But whilst I've been here, I've really become more academic over worked and worked and worked at it to try and improve my educational side and I took on more responsibility. Yeah. We've all got one thing in common and that's we're disabled but we all know we're just like anyone else but we're different um, uh, just different abilities but um, people sometimes don't see beyond the chairs which is an obstacle in life. John and Vikesh are coming to the end of their studies. They recently moved off campus into accommodation managed by the college. It made me more confident and more independent. So, because and then I, I don't have to like. Um, like, well, go with the stuff. Oh, make sure he's in. Oh, yes, I'm not stupid. <laughs> this would be a good experience just before I we leave, because I haven't really uh, worked on a cooker before. Uh, if you know how to turn yeah. the thing on, and then mm. take time with the step by yeah. me. It's this one. Simeon's only experience of being amongst other children with disabilities is his game session. It's held once a week at a local sports club.
comes again and again, I suppose, in waves for something like Sim is, well, well, why am I like this? I am very different indeed, unless there are a few others around, which is why, you know, uh, sports for wheelchair users is, oh, we're all the same, That's this funny. is great. They kept on stopping us, though. Yeah, but sometimes when I forget I'm in a wheelchair, I feel normal, like I'm not in a wheelchair, which, but when um, I have nobody to play with, then I will remember I'm in a wheelchair. But when I play about it, there was one time where we were playing with it, I was playing with somebody, and they forgot I was in a wheelchair, so they were going really fast, and I said, stop, stop! And they said, oh, sorry, I forgot you were in a wheelchair. It was really funny. It was really funny. Simeon has 18 months left before he starts secondary school. But he and his family need to make their decisions soon. Everybody turn back to where had Sasha's father been going? Anybody remember hunting. that? Hunting. Would you go and hunt and kill the wolf? I'd be really happy if there was, like, um, pe children in wheelchairs there because um, it would help it would make me more happy there. And, like, if it was, like, um, um, children who aren't in wheelchairs, then um, they it would just... Um, like, they might not understand why I'm in a wheelchair. It seems to me inclusion is a great goal, but I'm also aware that both the demands on a teacher with a class of 30 plus and the needs of that young person don't always make that ideal of inclusion possible. You have to look at the whole picture and as a parent you always fight for your child but I'm also aware teachers do an amazing job and I, mm. I feel for them if they're pushed to include what is actually very difficult for them within the, mm. the whole of the rest they do. We feel he's still completely committed to joining in fully in all curriculum areas including PE. <laughs> Which is a like all pupils Simeon's progress is carefully monitored by his school. Today is his official review. It will help decide where he'll go next. It is amazing how much he wants to join in with everything. Staying with his friends has always seemed the best idea. But will the teenage years call for a different set of priorities? I see the advantage of Simeon growing, growing up with children right from the age of four when he was in the nursery has, is a big difference to um, children meeting him at this stage mm -hmm. and learning to cope because yeah. I think, you know, and I guess when it becomes teenage, is it different again, you see? Yeah. And I think it's these kind of things that we're wanting to weigh up as well. There are two days to go before Sophie attends the Star College Open Weekend. November ish. November. So they're going to be quite subtle through. Yeah, did just, you just want... round, yeah? yeah? Do you want them scattered all the way through or just a few on the party? Um, sort of like that. So they're sort of sitting on the top. Yeah. What do you think of that? What is, is that like an open day or do you actually start? Um, open day. Three nights and four days. Are you looking forward to that? Yay! This is really a good time for her to go now because she'll be with other kids that you know the same as she is and um, in the same situation. And they've all got they've got the facilities in Star to sort of put them on a bus. They load them all on a special bus and take them into Cheltenham, and they can go to discos. And when they're eighteen, they'll be going to pubs and restaurants and going to cinema. And she'll be doing all the things that every other teenager is doing. Are you pleased? Wonderful. Do you want your band back on or are you going to leave it like that? Yeah. Do you want it good? I think that was roughly translated brilliant. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Cheers, Kelly. Bye. Bye. 
Simeon's come to look at Rithlington School, one of the mainstream secondary schools that are available to him. This is the house block, and so we've got the individual learning centre. We don't call it special needs, we don't no. call it learning support, because we've tried to get away from yes. any stigma being attached to the special needs department, so we deliberately call it the individual learning centre, which I is like this that. area we're going into. Yes. And it's used by mainstream classes and um, able pupils groups as yeah. well. So it so. just gives the whole feel that it's for everybody. What you did for a first attempt. That boy is all my friends. I think in, in looking at the whole issue of secondary school, it having worked so well at primary school, mainstream, I think we haven't thought of looking at special school uh, or anything different because again if you can continue on through mainstream we still believe that'd be the greatest benefit albeit with some cost uh, maybe in him having to fit with a whole bunch of people who he's different to did you yeah how do you think Zim would get on here with his special needs boys? What do you think? Uh, I reckon he'll like it here. Yeah. 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 We've got good facilities. You know, he'll get on well. Yeah. I think it's just very helpful to see more than one place because you, only by doing that do you get to test well, what might work for him. My mind all the time is just thinking around how would he feel here, how would it work here. So I think it's just a process, isn't it, of, of no school's going to be perfect. And it's we such know that. An individual choice as well, in, the, in the end, it has to be, you know, you and yeah. I in the end just have to weigh yeah. where we're most comfortable, even if it's between two very good schools. I guess when looking at school life, the vulnerabilities that we become increasingly aware of, as well as the successes and the, you know, the good points, is the potential for Sim to um, be excluded in the the whole realm of friendships mm. and being part of a, a gang of people, if you like, who he's just naturally part of, I think that would always be our apprehension, mm. is, is not deliberately or any way maliciously, but much more just that he can get excluded because he can't access where that group of people are, if you like, and that's already been there enough to tell us that's probably that's the biggest where problem. we would most both feel quite quite apprehensive if it got like that. Simeon's second option is Ralph Allen's school, one that a majority of his friends will attend, and he knows other children here with disabilities. So, Simeon, excellent. Lead the way. Keep going. Good lad. Right. And uh, down the red. Simeon will need tables that are okay. angled. When Josie did art with me last year, we had a smaller greeting. So she just take out one of the um, large tables and fit the little one in. And then she had a board on the front, wasn't it, that just slipped in so that she could do the same with everybody else. This is Jan Smith. Yes, Simeon. Hi, Jan. Hello. Hello. And uh, not only does she work with you, Josie, Simeon. 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 Yes. Yes. Simeon. But Jan is our expert on physical activities and on swimming. We only take very special ones like you. Yes, because not everybody goes swimming, but I take two children swimming. And I take one little girl who's in year 10, and she's in a wheelchair like you. And we go every Monday afternoon. And she does 20 lengths with me. And she keeps nice and fit. And I take another little boy who's in year eight. And we go down on a Wednesday. And I'm teaching him to swim. Just don't do arm wrestling with him. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're brilliant arm wrestling. Incredible. Oh. Okay. This is school is really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I do know some of the teachers. Did that help a bit? Yeah. Did you feel? It was, did it feel friendly? Yeah. Oh, all my friends are going to be here. So. Yeah. That's for sure. They will be. Yeah. Which means that they know how we feel. That's right. Which means that they know um how it feels um um where a wheelchair is. <laughs> Any change from juniors to seniors is a big one, obviously, because of all the adjustments of leaving a closer community and going to a large secondary school. And I think we're just aware all the time that, that for Sim it's very vulnerable. Mm. You know, that he, he is a very vulnerable youngster. And I've taught in the past as well, so I know secondary schools and, you know, the thought of him just, if you like, naturally being thrown into that whole mass of adolescence for us I think is quite a tender thought so I think exploring it kind of helps you start to find some of your fears are allayed and you know some of you if you like it inspires you to think oh no it could work <laughs> Sophie's weekend away is about to begin Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we didn't bring any. Because normally they said about bringing a TV and stuff, but she said she's not going to be in the room very often. No. But you've got enough posters to cover it's the entire wall. I know. I bought a picture of them in my suitcase. My goodness gracious me! She had Mum. Yeah. It's brilliant. But I still think I'll be a bit, bit. Lost in here. You'll soon find your way. You a bit more like home. <laughs> yeah. The big bourbons. Yeah. The fruit shoots. All right. Have a nice time. Can you ring me, yeah? When are you gonna ring me? Too late. <laughs> Too late. Look after you for me. Yeah, yeah. Too late. So. Bye bye. Bye bye. Should we go and have a look? Yeah. How do you feel now? I feel great. <laughs> okay. Very often when we see students at our initial assessment interviews, you ask them a question and they look to mum or dad for the answer. And uh, half a term after being at the college, they're able to then start making and thinking up their own answers without relying on anyone else to, to do it for them. Very often they've not had to make new friends. Um, usually in, in schools, um, if you've got a disability, other, other school children will actually approach you. Um, and that's not the case here. Everyone has a disability here. You have to go out and you have to make those friendship bonds. And of course this is giving specific skills that these young people will actually use when they leave the college, back in their own communities, um, uh, and make a difference to the, act to the life that they lead. I've got, I've got all my, fr I've got, well, some of my friends I've met, um, they, they do fantastic stuff like sports and activities, so. Sport and health all morning in the gym, and then afternoon you've got performing and creative arts. Think about your contemporary walk through as well. If they're happy, you can see it on their face. And so what we decided on is the question... It's relaxing and you don't, you don't have to do work all the time. So all you've got to do is like do a bit of work but have fun as well. Yeah, what are you up to? You want lunch? Have you had any lunch or are you just about to have it? What about this boy you've met? I met him again. Yeah, what's his name? Um, William. 
It sounds like she's having a ball, yeah, don't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah. You obviously your biggest fe fear as a parent is, you know, are they going to look after your child as well as you've been doing it, you know? And then it dawned on me one day, didn't it? And I thought, oh my God, so they look after her better. <laughs> you know? Not possible, not possible. <laughs> Try and use this space. Try and spread out. Think about what everybody else is. I've been to the disco. I've seen a lovely boy, and I think he fancies me. I'm knackered. I want to bed. I am so glad I'm going home on Wednesday because I like my my other bed a lot. Sophie's weekend has been a success. She's had a taste of independent living. Despite Simeon's young age, the same issues of independence and future schooling are at the forefront of his parents' minds. They're hopeful that the mainstream will be best for Simeon. <laughs> I think, you know, a person like Simeon in the end has to live in the real world where there are, um, you know, you come up against all the difficulties that somebody in a wheelchair has to face. And I think uh, that's been one of the strong um, points about going to mainstream because mm. that you are faced up with. Uh, those kind of challenges. So we couldn't just leave him there? I think mainstream school has prepared him for adult mm. life in that way because he could have lived a much more sheltered, um, more protected at uh, a specialist school. Sometimes I think, well, what is he going to do at 18? Mm. I kind of go there in my mind. I think, so what would it be like? And if I... I can either have a slightly gloomy look and think, oh, where will he end up? Who's going to accept him as he is? And then you get that, that struggle. Or I can look and think, well, hopefully if we keep pressing forward with him, all sorts of opportunities will be there to, to do a job that will be very satisfying for him. I'm, I, but I don't really know enough. But I think mainstream education right now is equipping him with the hope that he'll have a, a good job and a normal okay. life and social circuit he'll be in. Okay, sleep tight. Wait. Yeah. See you in the morning. Thanks. Simeon and Sophie have finally made their decisions. For Simeon, he'll remain in the mainstream and hopes to stay with his friends. Nearly all my best friends will go there, and Emily, who's in the wheelchair at my school at the moment, is going to go there. So I think I'll go there because all my, my friends are going there. Everything I did, I, I liked it, but. But so not all my mate, not my, none of my friends are going to go there. I think I'll go to Mouth Island. And for Sophie, it's all about independence. She's been given a place at Star College. I can't really see that. No. 
Need to bring the light back up, sir. That's it. Mm -hmm. oh, well, mm. What can I say? I have to say, it's a nice face. <laughs> was your one name? Shut up! And she got the letter saying that she'd been accepted, accepted. and yeah. it was, I'm in, I'm in, you know, and yeah. uh, it was fabulous to see. Yes. Yeah. So. You wouldn't do Sophie any favours to dwell on things she couldn't do. She needs to just get out there and find the things that she can do. And again, the star will open that up for her. For Sophie and her parents, the weekend was a taste of what the future holds and of the adjustments that all families must make as their children turn into adults. It was very strange it was, it at was, four o'clock when yeah. she didn't come home. It's you know? strange coming home from work and not seeing her there. Yeah, you know, which yeah. Is, yeah. It's just for three days. No, I know, three but, it's, days. but it's not going to be, is it? Three <laughs> But it's still strange. It's Nothing just, else. It's, uh... But it will be for more than three days when you yeah, come in September. Well. Hearing how much fun she's having, it's just you just think, great, yeah. good on you. It's about time, isn't it? You got out there and had some fun. Yeah. yeah. Sophie says she'll come home weekends, which I'm sure she will do to begin with, but then I'm also pretty sure after a while she'll be saying, I'm not coming home this weekend, Mum, because mm. we're going to wherever. But, um... How do you, just... What do you think about that, Sophie? No, you've had had the feel of making some friends and they all want to go into town on the weekend. Are you going to think, I want to be yeah. going to town with my friends or coming home to see mum and dad? Going downtown. Yeah. I think that would be normal. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be, that would be fine. But yeah. go on, tell us, you, did yeah. you miss us a little bit? A little bit. Oh, well, <laughs> well, that's, that's okay then. That's I'd right. rather you be having fun than sat up here missing yeah. us. I was up a hill this afternoon with a beautiful view at the back here and I, and I in my mind I was actually thinking well why can't we get Sim up here I don't know how but why can't we get him to enjoy this view and I had a sense of adventure well can he climb a mountain well it doesn't seem like he can but is there any way you know and, and unless you push a bit sometimes you you don't get to find that out and, and the same with the schools I think yes that's right <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, everyone needs someone to love, but finding the perfect partner can be tough. But do you not think it's important for it to be like a nice girl, someone who can get on with well? Someone who can make you no, laugh? No, she's got on the face of an old dog. <laughs> There's more to life than that, John. There's more to life than that. If you've been affected by any of the issues in today's programme and would like to talk to someone in confidence, call the BBC Action Line on 08000 566 065. Or if you'd like a free Open University leaflet exploring the experiences shared in this programme, and if you want to find out more about Open University programmes on the BBC, call the Action Line or go to open2.net.